She is a full shalema to my dear student, Nadi Charles, Nadi Batchaya, because both of them are full shalema of Korv Mamash, and full shalema Yehuda Chaim, Ben Esther, Sarah, and full shalema. Havla Ben Chaim, Ben Chaim, Leila Nishma, Sidov, Ben Chaim, Pesach, William and Helen, Rochel Bas Yosef, Dovid Ben Avraham, Yitzchak Bas Sarah, Ben Sarah, Devorah Bas Yitzchak, Zama Leib and Moshe, Amichai Ben Yaakov, Gedali Ben Tzvi Ruvain, Rochel Bas Yosef, and Eliezer Ben Yaakov, Leila Nishma Tam. Uh, today we're going to speak more of the Haftorah, usually the Haftorah in the uh, uh, current events in Haftorah, but here we have a double header of the Parsha, so we're going to find uh, more current events in the uh, Parsha than we find in the uh, Haftorah. So this week we're going to focus more on the Parsha and find amazing current events in the uh, double header. Uh, Matot Mase. Is it strange to name a Parsha after tribes? Nechama. Parsha of the tribes. Why do you need 12 tribes for, Golda? Isn't one tribe enough? We all come from, from what? From Yaakov Avinu, right? So why do you have to have 12 tribes for? Why? There's a pasuk in Mishle. Derochea darke noam dechol netivo teo shalom. I'm not going to give up my day job, don't worry. Derochea darke noam. Her ways are ways of sweetness and pleasantness. Whose ways? The Torah's ways. The Rachel, her ways, or the Shechina's ways, are sweet and pleasant. It doesn't say Derech. It says, the her ways. The Torah's ways are Darke Noam. Not Derech Noam. Darke Noam, Benyamin. What does that mean? All her ways are pleasant and sweet. No one can say, my way or the highway. Right? Svardi, Chusid, Misnagid, Ashkenazi, Yashtraimel, Nishtraimel, Black Hat, Kippa Saruga, or No Hat. We don't judge anybody. Dorachel, Darke Noam, not Derech Noam, Sarah, right? You know this better than everybody. All her ways are pleasant. Not my way. And therefore, there are 12 different tribes, says the Uriah Kodosh. 12 different tribes. Says the Uriah, we believe in unity, but not uniformity. Unity, not everybody has to wear a strime or a black hat. Unity, but not uniformity. Amen. Right? Mm. We all have what? Our ways to reaching Hashem. Different strokes for different folks. Right? You don't have to always wear black and white. You can wear an Hawaiian shirt. Right? God doesn't judge anybody by the color of his shirt or his kippah. Right? You know the story. Reminds me of a story. All my stories are true, but some didn't happen yet. Uh, this chusid. This chusid. Um, a day after Yom Kippur. He was heavily in debt. Uh, and may assure him, very heavily in debt chusid. Couldn't pay his bills. A large family. And someone told him, listen, you can make a lot of money in Las Vegas. You go to Las Vegas, make a lot of money. You know? Uh, you figure, listen, the day after Yom Kippur, all my sins are forgiven. But he says, you can't go. You can't go dressed in your shrimp and your kapata. And you have to shave off your beard. You go to Mayor Shardim to gamble. You can't go like that. Look at like a freak. So with a broken heart, he shaved off his beard. And he took off his black uh, shrimp and the, the white socks. The white socks, right? And because you can't go to Vegas looking like Chusid. So he bought himself an Hawaiian shirt and Bermuda shorts and shaved clean and he put on sunglasses. And he went to Las Vegas to gamble to pay off his debts. Look, he has no embreda. So he's running into Las Vegas airport. He's running, running, running to get his luggage to take a taxi to the casino to maybe win some money to cover his debts. He runs, he trips over a suitcase, he falls down three flights of stairs. And never he breaks both legs. He's laying there, he looks up, he says, Hashem, Hashem, what did you do to me? I didn't even get out of the airport. It's the day after Yom Kippur, I'm nice and clean, didn't have a chance to leave the airport. Hashem, what did you do? God says, Yankel, is that you? I did not recognize you. That's good. It takes what it takes. Hmm? Yeah. Without your strimal and beard, Yankel, your Hawaiian shorts and your Bermuda shirt, I didn't recognize you. Okay, so anyway, Matot. We do believe in an LGBT society. 
Ligbit. We do. L is Lubavitch. G stands for Ger. B stands for Above and Bells. And T stands for Tells. <laughs> Get it? LGBT society. Lubavitch, Ger, Above and Tells, right? All Yidin, all Yidin, I'm not making a joke. There's women on the wall, women on the wall, they put on towels and fill them by the Kotel. They mean well, their husbands do not put on towels and fill in. So they figure, Ishtay Kigufay. Maybe Ishtay Kigufay. They're wrong, but we have to Melamit Schus on them, Nikimia. They mean well. They figure they're Moitzi, their husbands don't daven, don't put on towels and fill in. So they figure they'll be Moitzi, their husbands. Okay? But anyway, we have to want make ourselves better. It's a very important. Um, Aaron Kotler points out something incredible. You know, next month is coming Av, El Ba. Av stands for El Ba. There's a strange posting in the book of Yonah. Yonah's on the love boat, remember? And the storm is about, is raging, about to destroy the ship. Yonah was a Novi Hashem. He's on the boat with sailors, you know, Sailor Sam. They're not the most moral people. Captain Cook, Captain Hook, you know, who are pirates? And the storm is about to destroy the ship. You know, he tells to the captain, Bishvili Asara Godalaze. This storm about to destroy the ship, it's my fault. You're a Haredi superstar, Navi Hashem. Why is it your fault? What about the cutthroats on, on the boat? Maybe it's their fault, the wife beaters, sailors, they're not so moral. Remember the sailors? So Rahan Kotla Zasal said, when a tragedy strikes, the Frum Jew is not supposed to point to anybody else. He's supposed to point to himself. Bishvili Hasar got my fault. Because I know better. Those guys don't want their Fablanja, they don't know any better. I know better. So it's my fault. So the great Vavaran Kotla, very Haredi. Look at yourself, he said. So we have to try to better ourselves, but to remember that there are many ways to the truth. And we do not have a monopoly on it, and therefore the Pasha is called what? Matot, tribes. Tribes. Kurdish Baruch Hu tells Moshe, take revenge for the Jewish people against the PLO, I mean the Midianites. When Moshe reports it, he changes God's instruction. God says, take revenge for spilled Jewish blood. When Moshe reports it, uh, Yehuda, he says, take revenge, nikmat Hashem. Why are you changing God's instructions? God said, take revenge for the Jewish people against Abu Mamzer. And Moshe says, Nikma Sashem. This is by, by Midbar 31. By Midbar 31, Apostle 2 and 3. What's God says, what? What's Nikma Sashem? Nikma, take revenge. What's Nikma Sashem? Nikama. No. Take revenge for spilled Jewish blood against the Midianites. When Moshe reports it, 31.3, he says, no, take revenge for Nikma Hashem. God told him revenge for the Jewish people. And Moshe says, Nikma Hashem. Why is he changing God's instruction? Ruth, do you hear the question? So Rashi says, no, current events. Sha'omed keneged Yisrael, kilo omed neged HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you raise a hand against Israel, you're raising a hand against God himself. It's one and the same. Revenge for the Jewish people is revenge for God. It's one and the same. So Moshe is not changing any instructions. It's one and the same. But it's more than that, Nechama, current events. Nikmas Panay Yisrael, uh, what did Golda Meir say to Sadat? She said, we can forgive you for what? What'd she say? We can forgive you for making our sons uh, we forgive us. Our sons. We can forgive you for killing our sons, right? That's what she said. She said to Sadat, "We can forgive you for killing our sons." But she doesn't know Nebuch. That's why Hashem says, "Nikas bnei Yisrael, you can forgive your revenge, but you can't re forgive." It's also Hashem's revenge. Yiras Yonatan. Golda should have learned the Pasuk. You want to forgive? But it's not just B'nai Yisrael's revenge, it's also Hashem's revenge. Right. To fight our enemies and take revenge against Abu Mamzer, that's an Akama for Hashem. So you want to be Moichel Yor, you can't be Moichel Nikmas Hashem. That's what Pinkus did. 
Nakama for Hashem. So Moshe says, draft Anoshim Latzava. By Midbar 31 3, draft men for the army, says Rashi. Sorry, now Rashi was very Haredi. Rashi says, Anoshim Tzadikim. Anyone who serves in the IDF is a Tzadik. Should I repeat that? Rashi in Chumash, Benyamin. I think he was very Haredi, I think. I don't think he'd go to the demonstrations. I don't think Rashi would go to the Gula and make demonstrations. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not before Lubavitcher Rebbe. Rashi Akodosh in this week's parsha, Anoshim Latzava. Says Rashi, Anoshim Tzadikim. Anyone who joins the IDF is automatically called a Tzadik. Rashi HaKadosh. Evelyn, in the parsha. In the parsha. Everyone who serves is a... The Baba Rebbe said it later, but it's actually a Rashi in this week's parsha. Pretty incredible. So God tells Moshe, you lead the IDF against the PLO. I mean against Midian. But Moshe hands off. He doesn't go. But before that, Elef Lamate, Elef Lamate. So if you read the English, it says a thousand, the Hebrew says a thousand to a tribe, a thousand to a tribe. Your English says a thousand to a tribe. But the Hebrew says Elef Lamate, Elef Lamate. A thousand to a tribe, a thousand to a tribe. So Sifri wonders how many soldiers were drafted per tribe? A thousand. Sachman says again, so Sifri says something incredible, Banish. Beautiful. Oh, you know what Benish said? Benish says that making Mishabeirach for Chayalim is a mitzvah in the Torah. It's based on the Sifri. For every soldier that went to fight, there was another guy sitting in the coil and making Mishabeirach and davening only for that. Each, each of the thousand had a petek with Yankel's name and Yosef's name and Elif Lamate, and corresponding to the Elif Lamate and the guy sitting in the coil who couldn't fight. Their job was to be mispalel, Yehuda, for Yankel ben Ruth, or Yosef ben Rochel. Elef lamate, elef lamate. So the Sifri, I think they were Haredi. Sifri is telling us, Yehuda, that making mishaberach for the chayalim is what? It's a mitzvah in the Torah, otherwise the words are extra, nechama. But some people say, don't confuse me with the facts. Not to make a mishaberach for the chayalim? What's going on? Elef lamate, an extra two words in the Torah. That those who didn't fight, their job was to be davening and making a shabbat specifically for each soldier. Each one had their, not called a pen pal, it's called a petek pal, right? So again, this week's parsha is just amazing. So he sends Moshe, Moshe doesn't go. He hands off to Pinchas. How come Moshe doesn't go? It's too old. He just knocked off Sichon and Og, the ogre. So why couldn't he go? God said, you go fight against Midian. Why didn't he go? He Says Ralph Slavichik, you know why he didn't go? Hakorat Hatov Avi. When he was on the lamb, how do you say that in English? A fugitive. That is English. <laughs> Running away from Egypt, he knocked off the uh, taskmaster. The KGB Egyptians are looking for him. Yisrael could not have taken him in without the authorization of the king of Midian. I mean, the king of Midian gave him protection. He's going to go fight Midian now. The Midianites took him in. They protected him from the KGB of Egypt. They didn't hand him over. Extradition treaty. So he felt that what? He could not go fight Midian, even though God told him to go. Hakora Tatov, Ai Derech Eretz, Kodma La Torah. Same reason why he couldn't. Same reason why he couldn't make her a shiksabab. Cosby, the daughter of the king of Midian. Why didn't he know? He forgot the Allah, and even when Pinchas reminded him, he said, "I can't do it," because the king of Midian authorized Yisrael to what? To take him in and protect him. He's going to go kill the daughter of the king of Midian? He was protected by the king of Midian. So he could not kill a Cosby. Not Bill Cosby. Cosby, the daughter of the king of Midian. So look how far Hakora Satoiv 
It goes even for Gemara and Shaita said, what was Moshe's real name? Tuvia. Tuvia, that's right. If I was a rich man, his name was Tuvia. So how come he's never called by his Hebrew name? Beautiful. Moshe was the name that the Egyptian princess gave him. He's never called by his Hebrew name, Tuvia. Hakora Satov. The Egyptian princess saved your life, Batya. So for the rest of his life, God never called him by his Hebrew name, but by his Goyish name. Moshe is not a Hebrew name. It's an it's Egyptian name. You find in the hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics, it's an Egyptian name. Bizarre. Hakora Satov, Avi. God expresses gratitude to the pagan princess who saved him. Because without her, no lawgiver, no redeemer. Without her, right? So therefore, he's called Moshe and never by his Hebrew name. Look how far Hakara Satov goes. What? Same thing the first two plagues. Moshe didn't want to have anything. Yeah, why? Because, because the water. The water saved him and what? And the, and, the, uh, and, the, and, the earth. and the earth covered up the Egyptian taskmaster. I want to ask you a question. The water cares less who hits it. Let's get real. Since little kids, Rabbi Abraham, we've been learning, oh, he didn't want to hit the water. The water protected him. When he was a baby floating in a basket, let's get real. The, wa the water knows the difference. Chanoch, the water knows who's hitting it and who's not hitting it. Let's get, that's, but that's what Rashi says. But let's get real. Yes, yes, Rashi says, don't mix me up. Rashi says, therefore, he couldn't hit the water and strike it, turn it into blood, because the water protected him. The water knows wh wh who's hitting it to get blood or not. The water's an adamant object. Let's get real, Chanoch. <laughs> Rabbeinu Bechai says, Hakora Satoiv is not for the water. To answer this kasha, I'll answer another one. In Pashas Mishpatim, the Torah says, non kosher meat, what should you do with it? Give it to Fido. Yeah. Give it to Fido? Yeah. Or Spot? Give it, Give it to the dog, says Rashi. Why? Because the, the dogs didn't bark 3,029 years ago in the Mitzrayim when we left Egypt, so now we give Fido his meat. Fido knows that he's getting meat because his great, 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 great pappy didn't bark when we left Egypt. Fido knows, Fido cares. No. But what's what Rashi says? What's the answer? Hakora Satoiv is for me. It's not for the other guy or for the water. To perfect my neshama, to get tikkun hanefesh, I must do Hakora Satoiv. The water couldn't care less, and the dog doesn't know why he's getting the meat. It's not for the other, Rachmiel. Brain of says, to complete my shleimut hanefesh, my neshama needs Hakora Satoiv. If I'm not expressing gratitude, there's something wrong with my neshama, chas v'shalai. Not for the water, it's not for the dog. So anyway, the Torah goes on and tells us over here, so Moshe Rabbeinu had no choice. He had to want not go to war, even though HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded him to go to war. But HaKor HaSatoiv, he had to hand off. He had to hand off. So the great miracle, they go to war against Midian, and there isn't even one casualty. Not even one casualty. Isn't that incredible? So after the war, the B'nai Ruvain and the B'nai God, they want to remain on the East Bank. Don't take us across the Jordan. So Moshe Rabbeinu says to them, ringing words, Acheichem yavol ha your brothers are going to the army, the IDF, and you're going to remain behind? Is that Yosher? Is that Yosher? Moshe Rabbeinu. He rebukes them. What's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with you guys? So they explain themselves. They say that what, that what? We'll join the army. We'll join the army. We will be in the vanguard. We will be in the vanguard. Current events. I don't want to say it, maybe. They keep saying, we will fight in the Duvdavani Brigade and we will win for Am Yisrael. Where's Hashem? Where's Anachnu? 
don't know if you headlined a few months ago, certain ICE officers in Sahal, when they do Yisker for a dead soldier, they don't want to say Hashem's name. Do you hear this? Certain officers say, they'll do Yisker, but they don't mention Hashem's name. We will win the war. We will win the war. Never that attitude, never after the six day war, never brought. Instead of saying, Kala Kovit la Kurdish Baruchu, they said, Kala Kovit la Tsahal. Where's the Kurdish Baruchu, Avi? Never. Manachtun the Cholates. Benei God, Benei Ruvain. Manachtun the Cholates. That's what they say. And they say, we're going to build, we're going to build sheepfolds for our cattle. They mention their possessions before they mention their own children. Can you imagine these guys? Their portfolio and their business more important than their own family. You know, some people, you know, anybody on his deathbed wishes he would have spent more time in the office. Anybody like that? Gee, I wish I would have spent more time in the office. They mention their business before what? Their own family. So Moshe Beidu says, what's with you guys? Lokain, asa ikar ikar va tofel tofel. First concentrate on your family. And then you'll worry about your what? Business. So they get the message. I think they get the quick learners. They're quick learners, because they do get. Moshe Beidu tells them, they say, Nacht on the Moshe Rabbeinu keeps repeating, In Techot Lithnei Hashem La Machama. Lithnei Hashem La Machama. And he says again, Lithnei Hashem La Machama. What do you mean we will win the war? It's Lithnei Hashem. Huh? This Pasha is always read during the three weeks. Right? People think that they run the show. Anachnu, Anachnu. Moshe said, what are you talking about, guys? You? In the cult of Lifnei Hashem la Mulchama. And he keeps repeating it. Menich v'sha'aretz Lifnei Hashem. Lachuza Lifnei Hashem. Over and over again, Moshe Rabbeinu said, who will give you the land? Who will fight for you? Who will win for you? Hashem. They get the message. They say, Vavodecho Yavu Kol Chalutz Tzava Lifnei Hashem Lamalchama. Kasha Adoni Dover. Rebbe, we got the message. No longer they say, Anachtu Nechaletz. Now what do they say? Lifnei Hashem Lamalchama. So Rabbi Nochem, they learn. Okay? Nachtu Navor Chalutzim Lifnei Hashem. First they said, we'll do it. Now they keep repeating like Moshe Rabbeinu, Nachtu Navor Chalutzim Lifnei Hashem. Lifnei Hashem. Kodesh Baruch Hu would do it, right? Kodesh Baruch Hu. Very strange Rashi, at the very last Rashi, the end of Pasha's Matot. Yareh ben Menashe conquers a city, Vayikpilo Novach Bishmo. And he calls her Novach. He names the city Novach, Bishmo. Why should I care, Nechama? This was 3,329 years ago. Why did he call the city? Very strange Rashi. I need someone who knows Dikduk over here. Rashi said, Vayikrala Novach Bishmo. Says Rashi, Vayikrala, he called her the city Novach. Rashi says, La, Eino Mapik Hei. You know what that means? Law ain't no mapik hey. Hmm? It's not that you call law. That you call law. Who cares how you pronounce it? Law. A law. Rashi said, ain't no mapik hey. Rashi says, it's a weak hey. So why should I care? It's a weak hey. Weak. Halash. Ain't no mapik hey. Rashi said, if you shall the sky am law, shem zeh, lefikach rafe. The name didn't last. So therefore the hay is what? Weak? What's Rashi driving at? 
Who does the hey stand for? Hashem. Without God, we're all weak. Rashi so profound. It looks like a big dog Rashi, Rab Chanoch. Why should I care? But Rashi so profound, the Vilna Gaon says this. Without the hey, we're all halash. Without God, we wind up in the dustbin of history. The name didn't last, said Rashi. It disappeared because the hay was missing. It was weak. The Hashem wasn't there. We had no room for him. We had no time for him. So Nebuchadnezzar Chalash. Rashi, so profound. Got to show you inside this Rashi. It's amazing. <clears throat> if the hay is missing, Hashem is missing, then we can't last. We disappear. Rashi said, the hay is not there, lo niskayim Hashem. The shame is not there, Hashem. Therefore, it's weak. There's a double header, Pasha's Masse. A travel log. There are 42 pit stops here. When the Jews left Cairo on the way to Pisgat Zev, David, they made 42 pit stops. Why 42? According to Tzror Hamor, the Kabbalistic Sefer, the 42 stops represent the 42 letter of Shem Hashem. Alpi Kabbalah, God's name is 42 letters. Each of these 42 stops, somehow we bonded tighter with the 42 letter name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And there are no shortcuts, says the Zohar. All of us, on the long and winding road that we call life, have to make 42 pit stops, whether we know it or not. Vayisu vayachnu, vayisu vayachnu. Why am I moving there? Why am I going here? What does God want for me? All of us have to make forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Not easy, but eventually they got there. Despite all the pitfalls, they got to the promised land. Every one of us, besides the pitfalls, we're going to get to the promised land. We have to know we're following the road map of life, not the road trap. The road map of life is the Torah. The Torah gives the names. Why are you... The Ashkenazi Balkora David sings this. All of these 42 stops the Jews committed sins. What are you singing about? Sfardim don't sing it, but the Ashkenazim sing it. What? Vayachnu b'mara, we were bitter, complained about this. Vayishu b'mara, why are you singing about? Take a pill and lie down. It's a catalog of sins, David. What are we singing about? It's a travelogue, a travelogue, a catalog of our sins. Ovel hashitim, we traveled from Ovel hashitim, kevrot atava. Why are you marching tune? So the Chassam Soifer, to answer this question, the Chassam Soifer what? Asked another question. Again, Ashkenazim on Yom Kippur, David. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Shamnu, Bogadnu. I am a no, low life, no good thief. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Barna Doifi. I speak Lush and Hara. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Gozalnu. I'm a corrupt, no good Nick. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you singing about? Sam Seifer said, What's wrong with you guys? Ah, beautiful. Said the Sam Seifer, yes. It's a catalog of sins. When we do tshuva, mayahava, all of those sins become mitzvot. That's something to sing. La, 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 la. The Sam Seifer, there's a catalog of sins. But if you do tshuva, mayahava, all of those sins have now been transformed to what? Mitzvot, Yuma 86. That's something to sing about. Yonatan, you hear this? That's why we're singing, says the Holy Chassam Soifer. Yeah, a catalog of sins, but we did tshuva, we paid the price, and why did we pay the price? Yeah, yeah. And once we paid the price, with tshuva mehava, that's something to sing about, that the Jew has the power to turn an Avera into mitzvahs. 
Isn't that something the Chama to sing about? How much God loves us? Now, they left Midbar Sinai, they wound up in Kivro Tatava. Why should I care? It's 40, 30 to 100 years ago, when you disengage from Midbar Sinai, what is Midbar Sinai? Torah values, Vayachnu Bekivro Tatava, Loyaleinu. You wind up in the graveyard of the lusters. If you disengage from Midbar Sinai, you disconnect from Torah values. Where do you wind up? Lo yelenu mekivro satava. Vayisu mekivro satava vayachlo bechatserot. How do you get out of the graveyard of the lusters? You have to be there. When you realize the world is a chatser. Vayachlo bechatserot. You know, in a chatser, in a yard, you don't stay too long, right? It's too hot, too cold. A yard, you can't stay too long. This world is only a chatser. If you focus that this world is a chatserot, that's the way to disengage from the graveyard of the lusters. Is that all there is? This world is a chatser. Avi, you don't spend too much time in a yard, too hot, too cold, temporary. So you focus on that, that this world is like a yard, we're not here that long. So therefore, that's a way to disengage, to get rid of your kivrot hatava. Huh? Prozdor, chatser, right? That it's temporary, right? That's a way to disengage from the Kivrot Hatama. To get out of there, right? Now the Torah, I'm credible, by Midbar 33, there's a mitzvah to live in Eretz Yisrael, the Yishaftem Ba, the Ramban counts a mitzvah in the Torah, to possess the land of Israel, the Yishaftem Ba. You shall possess the land and dwell in her. According to Ramban, if you live anywhere else, you transgress a positive mitzvah, including Lakewood? I don't know. The Yishaftem Ba says the Ramban, it's a positive mitzvah to live in Eretz Israel. And if you don't live here, you transgress a positive mitzvah. Hmm? Includes Borough Park too, I think. The Yishaftem Ba. Two mitzvahs that you do with your whole body. With your whole body. Right? What's the other one? Sukkah. Sukkah, right? With your whole body, right? Well, mikvah is only for ladies. Well, one minute. Men, for men, it's not a mitzvah to go to a mikvah. What? For men, it's only a minhag. There's no mitzvah for a man to go to a mikvah. How do I know, Vicky? When a man goes to a mikvah, does he make a bracha? The test is, the Toysus tells me, how do you know if a thing is a minhag or a mitzvah? If there's a mitzvah, you make a bracha. The ladies go, they make, a, they make a bracha. For them, it's a mitzvah. Men don't make a bracha. For us, it's only one of minhag. But anyway, in the mikvah, you can't wear your boots, can you? <laughs> living in Pisgat Zev, I mean, living in Israel and going to a sukkah, you're doing the mitzvah even with your boots on. Yeah. Even with your boots on. So the Torah commands us to live in Israel and the Torah <laughs> warns us. By Midbar 33, 55, fasting your seatbelt. If you don't, don't drive out the inhabitants from the land, those that you allow to remain here will be seeking be'enechem. There will be knives in your eyes, thorns in your side, and it will terrorize you in the land that you live here. Says the Ramban, something on Christ. You can look it up. I, I, saw, I almost fell off my chair. The Ramban, writing in the year 1265. David, you've got to look it up. I should have made copies, but the Ramban is very small. The magnifying glass. The Ramban, on this pasuk. Remind me to show it to you later, Abraham. Okay? By Midbar 33, pasuk 55, the Ramban. By Midbar 33, pasuk 55. The Ramban wrote this in 1265. He says... Those that you allow to remain here, the peace partners, will be seeking me in Echem, says the Ramban. Sakin Chad Shel Barzel. They will terrorize you. Sakin Chad. What does Sakin Chad mean? A sharp knife. Why does the Ramban have to ask me Barzel? Who doesn't know that a knife is made out of Barzel? When he wrote this, our peace partners were not terrorizing us with sharp knives of Barzel. When he wrote this, 
You must have been a prophet. You let them live here, they'll use sakin, he has to add the word sakin chad, which means what? Sharp knife, and he has to add me barzel. In case you don't get the point, a metal sharp knife. They'll terrorize you with. That's the Ramban, says Rashi. Sikim b'enechem, liyesedot hamenakrot enechem. They will p pack their suicide bombs with nails and screws that pierce the eyes. How did Rashi know this? Do you remember in the, in the Intifada, they packed their bombs with nails and screws. And Nebuch, many of the victims had nails embedded in their eyes. I remember. How did Rashi know that in the year 1040? Speaking about the Sabaro bombing. You say that? They will terrorize you with nails and screws that pierce the eyes. Rashi and the Ramban, were they prophets? Hmm? What? But listen what the Torah says. If you don't throw them out, what I plan to do to them, I'll do to you. You didn't expel the peace partners, you got expelled from Gush Katif. This week's Pasha. They'll terrorize the Tsaroeschem al Oretz. And the Ramba or Rechaim Akadosh. They'll terrorize you on the land that you live, says the Orachaim. I'm reading right sixteen hundreds. Lo Milvad Shekhziko Bechelik Oretz Shaloi Zikitaba, not only Will they terrorize you in the parts of the land that you didn't take from them? Even the land that you live there, they'll terrorize you. Even within the green line. You could look it up. Even the part that the UN gave you. Even on the land. You don't belong in the green line either. This is our Chaim HaKadosh writing David in the year 1600. Well, these people, holy men, prophets. Gamal Chelek Sha'atem Yoshvim Ba. What does that mean? Gamal Chelek Sha'atem Yoshvim Ba. Within the green line, even Tel Aviv, Lomad, I'll say to you, Tzumi men, you don't belong anywhere here. It's our own doing. The Torah warned us. The Torah warned us. Nobody warned us, but you can't even say this. If the Ramban would say this today, maybe they put him in jail. I don't know. They'll terrorize you. Sakin Chad Shel Barzel. But anyway, scary. scary. No, it's true. Ruvain and God, Ruvain and God. They want. They want to stay Aver the east bank of the Jordan, the east bank. So Moshe gives it to them, and all of a sudden, he takes Chatzi Menashe, he tears Menashe in half, and he puts them on the Aver Yard. Menashe never asked Nechama. Menashe wanted to be in Pizgadzev. Why is Moshe tearing Menashe, putting half the tribe in Aver Yardain and the other half in Israel proper. They didn't ask. Keep them, keep them keep what? Keep them honest. But they didn't ask. Only Reuven and God asked Avra Yardin. We have a lot of cattle. Remember the Ponderosa? A lot of cattle. <laughs> Manasseh didn't have a lot of cattle. What do you want? What are you splitting? What are you tearing the, the, the tribe in half? Keep them holy. My Reverend Palms Atzal said something incredible. God has a long memory. <laughs> What goes around, comes around. They were in Egypt 210 years. This is 40 years later, right? Yeah. 250 years ago, when Yosef at Tzadik was what? Causing pain and anguish to his brothers. Remember he planted the silver goblet in Benjamin's bag. Then he sent somebody to accuse them of stealing. Yeah. And then the brothers opened the bag and they tore their clothes. Who was the one that planted the silver goblet? Who was the one that accused Benjamin falsely? 
Who caused the brothers to tear their clothes? Yep. Chazal say it was Menashe. He caused pain and anguish to his uncles. 250 years later, he caused his uncles to tear their clothes in grief and anguish. 250 years later, his descendants are torn. You hear that, Palm? There's a debt, an outstanding debt. Menashe caused his uncles to tear their clothes in anguish and grief. So 250 years later, his tribe is torn. But his father told him, if your father tells you to cause pain and anguish to another Jew, you'll have to listen. If your father tells you to smoke a cigarette on Shabbos, you should have said, listen, Abba, you have something going with your brothers. Don't get me involved. Send Tutankhamun to frame them. He should not have listened to his father to cause this anguish to his brothers. So therefore, what goes around comes around. He had to suffer. His tribe had to suffer and to be what? Torn, torn. Torah goes on and speaks about here a rotseach. Someone who kills somebody, the shogeg, he goes to Ore Miklat. The mazid, he, he has to be executed. He has to remain, if he kills somebody, I think it's called accidental homicide, he has to remain in the Ore Miklat until the death of the Kohen Godel. And the, and the Gemara in Marcus says something strange, Nechama, the end of the Marcus. <coughs> that the uh, mother of the Kohen Gadol would go to the Ori Miklat with picnic basket, KFC, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, all goodies, that the uh, Merzeach shouldn't be mispalel, that her son should die, because his ticket to ride is the death of the Kohen Gadol. Doesn't say that the mother, doesn't say that the wife of the Kohen Gadol brought goodies to the Merzeach. Said the mother of the Kohen Gadol brought goodies to the Merzeach and said, please don't be mispalel for the death of my son, otherwise no more KFC, no more Dunkin' Donuts. You hear this? It was kosher back then. What? KFC is kosher now. They're coming back. They're making a comeback. Right? So what is the, what is the death of the Koyen Godel got to do with the release of this prisoner from the, what's it called, house arrest? Or Miklat? Rashi says, the Koyen Godel's job is to make God's presence intensify in the land of Israel, among Yidin. The Rotseach, he drives away the Shekhinah. He drives away the Shekhinah. And therefore, he cannot go free until the Kohen Godel dies. What does that mean? A murderer makes the Shekhinah depart from Israel. Why? How does a murderer make the Shekhinah depart from Israel? Every Jewish person has part of the Shekhinah inside of him. Right. We all have a piece of God inside of us. The Tzelem Elohim, the Chelik Elohim Imal. Therefore, a dead person is called the Halal. The English word hollow. The dead person is called the Halal. Hollow, because he's hollowed out. The, the godly soul is gone. So when you take someone's life, Leyelenu, when a Jew dies, the part of the Shechina that lived inside that Jew is what? Gone. Gone. Tremendous halal he caused. And therefore, a dead person, the most defiling thing in the face of the earth, more than a dead pig, is what? A dead human being. Isn't that strange? Bein Bechai wonders. What defiles more, a dead pig? Or a dead Jew? A dead Jew? Why is that? Isn't that bizarre? Bein Bechai explains, what's the holiest object in the world? Much holier than a Sefer Torah. A living human being. A living human being is much holy. The holiest thing in the world is a living human being. Because he has a godly soul inside of him. When the godly soul is gone, there's a tremendous halal. If you take physics 101, David, nature <coughs> abhors a vacuum. Is that the right word? Nature abhors a vacuum. Bein B'chai knew about physics. I don't know how you know. Since a living human being is the greatest kidusha, once the soul is gone, there's a tremendous void. 
So what rushes in? Forces of Tuma. Since a living person is the holiest entity in the world, so therefore a dead person is the worst Tuma. Because where there was great Kiddusha, and now that it's gone, there's a tremendous Halal. And nature will not tolerate a vacuum. So Posik and Kohelis, Zel Umat Zel Oshelahim. Zel Umat Zel Oshelahim. What is that, Zel Umat? Where there's great Kiddusha, the forces of Tuma are swirling around. Speaking now, we're in the middle of the three weeks. Three weeks of mourning, right? There's another three weeks of great joy. From the beginning of Rosh Hashanah until Hashanah Rabbah is how many days, David? Also three weeks. 21 days. And now we have the 21 days. The Marshal says something incredible. Marshal says that these three weeks now are days of mourning, right? But Mashiach comes and Tishabab and, and Shivasra Tamas will become Yom Toivim. These three weeks will be B'nai Saskar. My great grandfather says these three weeks will assume the status of a Chalamoid. Just like the three weeks from Rosh Hashanah until Rosh Hashanah Rabbah are three most joyous weeks of Slicha Mechila. So these three weeks of mourning, the mourning itself is a kapara. The Marsha says that. Well, where's the, where's the, Marsha? the Marsha is in, um, on the Indian of the, um, the Soil Hashem, Soil Azazel. The Gemara there in Yuma. Soil Hashem, Soil Azazel. He says, the soil Hashem and soil Azazel. The soil Hashem is the three weeks of Rosh Hashanah to, to what? Shana Rabbah. And the Zazel, that's the three weeks of mourning. Both equally, you can't have one without the other. Just like the soil Hashem atones, the soil Azazel atones. But this atonement is through mourning. But that also atonement. Is atonement through joy, the three weeks are Shada to what? Shada Rabbah. But there's also an atonement to what? Through mourning. The government officers will probably use this excuse to close the world. Right? That means that six now, weeks of joy. Now, now, isn't it strange? We'll talk more about that on Sunday, but isn't it strange that the blackest day in Jewish history is celebrated exactly the same way as the most joyous day in Jewish history? The Mishnah Taina says, Happy day. The happiest day in the Jewish calendar is what? Yom Kippur. And the blackest day on Jewish calendar is what? Tisha B'Av. Isn't it bizarre, Benjamin, that we celebrate the blackest day the exact same day as what? As the happiest day? The same things that you can't do on Tisha B'Av, you can't do what? On Yom Kippur. The black fast and the white fast celebrate the same way. So what's the idea? <coughs> Just like Yom Kippur is a slicha mechila, Tisha B'av is also slicha mechila. It's all about slicha mechila. You can do it Yom Kippur, chas v'sholom Tisha B'av, but whatever we suffer in life is a slicha mechila kapara. And the black fast of Tisha B'av will not be, will be canceled, be transformed into a day of joy. We'll have to talk about why. Not enough to be canceled, but to a day of joy. Good. What does Zechariah say? The fast of the fourth and the fast of the fifth will be days of joy. Why days of joy? We're going to go back to plan A. Tisha B'av was supposed to be a great yontif. That's the day the Maraglam came back. If they came back with a good report, Piz Zev, here I come. Tisha B'av was supposed to be the day that the Jewish people crossed into Eretz Yisrael. It would be a great joy, but no. Miraglam sabotaged the mission. So it became a day of great sorrow. But when Mashiach comes, we'll have paid the debt. Yes. So Tisha B'av will assume the day. That's the day the Jewish people are supposed to come to Eretz Yisrael. We're going to go back to plan A. And we're already here. We're already here. No. Right? Shivos of Atamos. Zechariah says it'll be a day of great joy. 
Zechariah 8. Shivosam will be at why great joy? Shivosam Atamos. That's the day Moshe Rabbeinu came down from the mountain. That was the day of Kabbalah Satoira, of the first Luchos. This would have been a great joy. But no, we worship the Getzka. So Moshe smashed the tablets. But Moshiach Khan will pay that debt. So Shivos Sabatamas will be a great day of joy because that's the day Yom Kippur, he came down with the second tablets. When did he come down, Golda, with the first tablets? Shivos Sabatamas. It was supposed to be a day of Matan Torah. But we sabotaged it because the Cheta Egel. When Shia comes, the debt will be paid. So bring back the good old days. So the Chariah says that Tishabam and Shiva Savatamos will be days of what? The base you the Sosa and Usimch of Miyadim Toivim. And if an Esoscha says that these three weeks of mourning will turn into a Chalamoid. And therefore, we always read Pasha's Pinchas during these three weeks. Pasha's Pinchas, very strange, a whole catalog of what? Of the Mayadim. What are you reading Happy Mayadim during the three weeks? Pasha's Pinchas always falls during the three weeks. Morning, you're reading the list of the joyous Mayadim? Doesn't seem to make sense. Said Bnei Sosko, my great grandpa. Because Tisha B'av, the three weeks will turn into Chalamoy. So it's matim to read what? Pashis Pinchas with all the mayadim and all the karbonot and chalamoid. Because these three weeks will become, Ruti, chalamoid. So it's matim. How do you say that in English? In, in, matim that we read the mayadim of Pinchas Dafka during these three mournful weeks. Stay tuned. The best is yet to come. On Sunday we have a 2 o'clock why God, we sin, so why did God make himself homeless? Homeless? Why God destroyed his house for our sins? That's Sunday at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.